Today we're just going to take a quick look at the uh, Super Nintendo Mini. Um, this console was released um, pretty much at the very end of the Super Nintendo life cycle and um, it was pretty much just released so that Nintendo could milk a little bit more out of uh, the Super Nintendo Entertainment System. Um, they were able to uh, shrink it down to size as you can see here. And then they were also able to skimp just a little bit on some of the parts and produce cheaper consoles, um, but still make it so that gamers could continue to purchase and play the Super Nintendo um, games. And so uh, just going to take a quick look around the console itself. Um, as you can see, it's still a top loader. And as you can see, when you uh, kind of move these little uh, windows or doors right here you can see that it still loads in right from the top just like the original Super Nintendo did. Um, obviously you'll notice that it is a much smaller console here. Um, it's much lighter than the original one as well. Um, a couple differences that you'll notice um, we have uh, a press button reset right here and then we also have a switch for the power on and off. Um, one of the things they were able to um, cut back on in order to reduce costs of making these consoles was the LED light for the on switch. As you can see right here there is no LED light on this console. So it does make it a little bit difficult to know when the console is powered on and off since there's no indication light um, but otherwise it works just fine. Um, around the front of the console you'll see that we have the same two controller ports um, so the controllers uh, for the original Super Nintendo can be used on this uh, mini model. Um, another thing is around the back they got rid of the ability to RF out. So as you can see here we just have a regular uh, cable back there. This is a an adapter that basically gives you RCA. Um, so this is your typical red, white, and yellow cable adapters. Then you also see that we have the power adapter back there and that's pretty much it. They kind of uh, cut back on the amount of outputs that we have in the back there, um, but I find that the uh, the RCA out that you have is you know pretty good in itself. You don't I don't really need anything else for this. Um, around the bottom, you know, there's nothing much to see here. Um, that is pretty much it. Like I said, the uh, console still loads from the top, so if you were to take in a, any of your normal SNES games, you just push them down there. Um, comes right out. No problems there. Um, the other thing that changed just a little bit with this console was the controller. And just by looking at it, you're probably thinking that this is the same exact Super Nintendo controller that we had in the first generation. And for the most part, you'd be correct. Um, the adapter here, the part that plugs into the console itself, is identical. Really, the main difference with this controller is, is going to be the stamp that you find right here, up at the top. Um, on the original Super Nintendo controllers, that was actually a stamp that just went right onto the plastic. But as you can see here, it's actually imprinted into the controller. Like, that's actually imprinted down in there. It's not just a regular stamp. And so, if you're purchasing an, a Super Nintendo mini system and you don't see a controller that looks like this with the actual stamp imprinted into the plastic, then that's not an authentic controller for the SNES mini. It's still a Super Nintendo controller, but it's not one that would have come with the console. So, you know, that's just something to be aware of. Uh, otherwise, the console or controller is exactly the same. Um, as you can see, the uh, model back there is SNS102 instead of uh, 101 like the original controllers were. But otherwise, the buttons still feel the same. You know, you still have the same uh, feedback and everything on these buttons. Um, still pretty much the same there. Um, so now we're going to go ahead and we're going to just take a look at it in action. Um, really there's not many differences, but we'll just go ahead and plug the console in now and just show you what it looks like for the most part. I also just wanted to give it just a quick look of the uh, Super Nintendo Mini, just kind of in action. Um, it works just like a regular Nintendo does. Um, really no differences. Um, same top loading feature, and as you can see, um, it plays, you know, regular Super Nintendo games just fine. So that's just a quick look at, you know, how the uh, Super Nintendo Mini works. All right now that we've looked at the console, um, what are my opinions? What are my recommendations on this console? Should you get it? 
Um, yeah, it's actually a nice console. Um, this is the one that I prefer just because it's smaller um, and, you know, there's, you know, it's not as big so I can fit it in a smaller space along with my other retro gaming consoles. Um, if the if the lack of the extra outputs bothers you, then this would may not be the console for you. Also, if you do not like the idea of there being no uh, LED indicator here on the front, this may also not be your console. Um, these NES or SNES minis actually do go for a little bit more than your typical Super Nintendo console. So, um, if you can find one of these, I would recommend picking it up, even if you already have an original Super Nintendo console just because these things are going up in price and uh, you know if you can find one that's in decent shape you know at a decent price I would definitely go ahead and pick it up you know just to add to your collection if you're a collector um, otherwise it plays exactly like the Super Nintendo so if you're not looking to just pick it up for your collection then and you already have an original Super Nintendo then no I would say it's not worth it to upgrade there's Nothing that you're going to get with this console that you don't already get in the first generation. But if you're a collector, I would definitely say, yeah, if you find one and it's a reasonable price, go ahead and, and pick it up. I think these retail for about $70 for just the console itself. If you get all of the cables and everything, you know, it's probably going to be a little bit more, especially if they include any games in it. But um, this has been a review of the Super Nintendo Mini. Uh, thanks for watching.